Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back. Hope you are doing well this week. Today, we have a little bit of a bonus episode for you. On our last episode of Now That's Something Good, we chatted with our friend Brian Roach. It was episode 40. If you haven't listened to that yet, I'd highly encourage you to go hear that conversation. Brian shares with us his story about his family, being a creative, his incredible career in the music industry, And he also tells us some funny stories along the way. So make sure you go check them out. There's one in particular that I'm still laughing about. Go listen to hear what I'm talking about. But today we did a little deeper dive into a recent project that he's been working on called the Matthew 6 Project. We wanted to take some dedicated time to share about that because it would just have been way too long of a podcast to fit it in everything else. But this is a really exciting project. It's exciting for Will and I too, because we've got to have a small part in kind of helping this project really really make it out into the world. And so today you hear Brian and I talk more about the heart behind the Matthew 6 Project, hopes for it, um, a little more about the songs, and just kind of everything you need to know about Matthew 6. So we hope you enjoy our conversation and enjoy learning more about the Matthew 6 Project. So here's my conversation with Brian Roach. Hey, Brian. How are you? Hi, Sarah. I'm good. How are you? (laughs) You ready to talk about the Matthew 6 Project? I am. All things Matthew 6. All things. Where do you want to start? Uh, I was hoping you had an idea. I do have an idea. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe. (laughs) (laughs) So this is actually where I want to start. I want you to give some backup of the Brian Roach story, because I think you have to start with it's been a while since you kind of did anything super musical. Yes, bit of a refresher. Yeah, I think you said you're bit of a twenty second of a version hiatus. of the last hour and a half conversation. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so give yeah. a little backstory to Brian Rich, the <clears throat> one, the sixty second version. Yeah. So uh, quite a while back, I quit my job to write songs for a living, signed a deal with Columbia Records, um, and worked as a professional musician for about eight years. Uh, and then after two albums and an EP, uh, shut it down. Uh, cause we were just working too hard for, you know, we just, we just weren't, weren't getting what we wanted, but we had, you know, we had a lot of fun in the process, but, um, burnt myself out pretty good toward the end there. Uh, so I, I took a hiatus and when I shut the band down, um, you know, I kind of told myself I'll, I'll get back to it uh, if and when I can't help myself. And almost, well, I'd say nine years to the day, nine years, you know, pretty close to nine years to the day, um, uh, I got to the point where I couldn't help myself. And uh, so that's when, that's when this project kind of started. Um, is that enough of a backstory? Like, I think so. Yeah. So we can um, dive more into it later if it comes up, but. Yeah. So. So. Start here though, like just, I think we need to explain what the Matthew 6 project is and then we can back up and talk about the bigger concepts, inception of it, all that. So what does Matthew 6 mean? What does it come from? All that stuff. Yeah. So the Matthew 6 project is, it's kind of an idea and approach to music. It comes from uh, the verse in the Bible. So Matthew 6, 5 through 8, that talks about, you know, spending quiet time with God. Um, It's, it refers to prayer. It talks about you know, um, go to your room, close the door. Uh, your father knows what you're praying for. Um, and I, I sort of took that concept and applied it to worship music, um, Mm -hmm. and quite purposefully was applying it to, you know, big corporate music. Some of my favorite songs that were kind of designed to be, um, you know, big corporate worship anthems and, stripping them down, you know, into, um, really simple, um, pure sort of personal versions. And I've had a lot of fun doing it. And it, um, each time I think I discover one that, that works, or at least works for me, I feel like it kind of transforms the song, Mm -hmm. um, kind of exposes the lyrics. And in some cases really, you know, it, it almost changes the tone of, of the, lyric i guess it all depends on how the song turns out but um yeah that's the general idea of the matthew six project love it so why would you say like now after 10 years really 
like you said a little bit, like the break, but like, why do you think this music, because it's totally different than the music you were making before. Right? Yeah. So I don't, I, as far as timing, n- no idea. I mean, I, you know, I, I have, I've always said, um, even back when I was just writing the auto vein music and the revolution one music or just whatever, all, all the other band stuff. Um, I always said the phrase that I've always used is I take delivery of songs. I don't mm-hmm. write them. And it's always just because I've, I've felt that, uh, sometimes when I'm writing a song, lyrics come out as quickly as I can write them. And a lot of times they're, they're basically final lyrics. And to me, that just doesn't, it never felt like creativity, right? Cause it's, you know, I've had, I've had friends call it stream of consciousness, which is fine, but you know, I'm a little bit more spiritual than that. So for me, it just feels like taking delivery. Yeah. It's, it just feels like it's, you know, any of, uh, any talents that I've ever, you know, felt like I possessed have always felt like a gift from God. And, and, mm-hmm. and I think I've always just kind of felt the same way about songs. So, so I, you know, I, I just, I quickly just chalk it all up to God's timing. You know, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, why nine years? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just, I ask, I have no idea. I, I just have no, I just know <laughs> that, right. I just know that I felt like it was time to listen to what was being delivered to me. And, um, it felt like the obedient thing to do, if you will. Yeah. Um, these ideas like, uh, again, songwriting, it, it can be consuming it. I, you know, for me, it just is consuming. You just kind of can't get an idea out of your head until you finish it. And, uh, when, when I was in the wrong headspace, um, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't make myself do it. Yeah. It felt like torture. Um, you'd sit down with a little bit of an idea and the very thought of, of fleshing that idea out was just excruciating. Mm-hmm. But then when the switch flipped, it was just like, I couldn't help it. I was playing the piano. I could not get up from the piano, which I've told you before. Like I didn't play the piano before. Um, I yeah, I couldn't get up from the piano. Couldn't stop taking delivery of <laughs> lyrics. And um, how many keyboards did you buy in the midst of this process? Oh yeah, because I was trying out a bunch. <laughs> yeah. I, so we've got a, like every time I come to your house, there's a new keyboard. There was there for a hot second because we we uh, we have an acoustic piano at the house, but you know that quickly becomes quite an imposition on the rest of your family if you're working on songs and you don't have you know our our acoustic piano is just it's upstairs where everybody can hear it and and uh it just man if if you want to stay with your family <laughs> you got <laughs> you got to find a space time. yeah because it's <laughs> you know when you're working on headphones. an idea like you know this when you're working on, a, on an idea it's it just can be very, very repetitive because you're, yeah. you know, you're trying to dial in nuances. Yep. And the truth of the matter is, my my family is super supportive and they're and they're ultra patient. But at some point, you know, well, when you're trying to watch TV or you just don't want any other noise, any it's, of that, you are like, I don't want to yeah, hear the piano. Anymore. Any of that. And then, of course, as it starts to get later, you know, you get an idea that shows up at midnight. Yeah, you know, it's hard to work out. You then. can't do that at all. So I didn't have. Uh, I didn't have anything that I could use for, for an application like that. And then when we started recording, um, we used virtual instruments for a bunch of that stuff. So I wanted a, you know, I wanted a decent, I wanted a decent MIDI controller yeah. that sort of felt good and, yeah. um, and was, you know, sort of inspiring to put your hands on. And so, yeah, I, I tried out a bunch of cheap options, expensive options. And So for and, those uh, that care, what option did you end up with? Oh, I, I, I landed on a Nord Electro 6 HP. <laughs> love it. Somebody will nerd out and love that. For a lot of people, this be like, somebody it's will a red probably not. I, yeah, it's not know. a, I mean, they're, they're, um, they're highly regarded as far as yeah. I know. Um, yeah. But they've got a bunch of different models, but this one, yeah, this one works nicely for me. Love it. Okay. We'll get into all that nitty gritty stuff because. Oh, really? It's good. Well, some of it, maybe. Yeah, okay. Who knows what we'll cover. But mm-hmm. back up. So, like, you didn't even start writing. Let's just tell the story kind of from the beginning. Okay. So, you you and I, we've been friends for a little bit of time. Yes. We go to the same church. You serve on the worship team that I'm also a part of. Truth. <laughs> Helped lead for the first part of your few months of you being around. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we started working together, doing some songs, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell a story of where, cause 
it didn't really start with that, but it did kind of start with me sending you a text message. Oh, yeah. I'll tell the story. So I came up with the idea all by myself <laughs> to record a version of a song that I chose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. That's not how it went. <laughs> He's totally kidding. Yeah. So uh, you and I, uh, what? We, we probably <laughs> sang, so Raise a Hallelujah. It's I forget the, the couple who sings it, but it's a Bethel tune. Um, you and I sang it at church, I think probably- <laughs> I mean, a handful, times, times. at least yeah, six, times. seven yeah. times. Um, I think you got a lot of good feedback. We were always really comfortable with that yeah. tune. Uh, me in particular, uh, you know, like I'm not comfortable with all of it. That one sat really well for yeah. me, I felt. And um, yeah, so I had updated my studio stuff after a really long time mm-hmm. of not updating it. And I was kind of like, you know, prepped and ready to go. And then you sent me a text with the idea of recording uh, our version of Raise a Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't and, realize I was opening Pandora's box when right? I sent that me text. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> but you know, when you you know when you invest in getting that stuff upgraded, it's always fun to have something to work on. And so, you know, my first thought was, yeah, that just that's a project. That's something to do. And then I was thinking, well, gosh, you know, big churches record other churches' songs all the time. So this this is something that, like, if we can. If we can find a way to own our own version of it, yeah, um, that's even more interesting. You know, didn't want to just cover it. You know, um, so yeah, that's what it started, or that's how it started. So we we did a, I put it, I I put a version of that song down, um, and I. Uh, yeah, I put a bunch of versions of that song. Why are you laughing at me right now? I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because in the back we have barista Will making coffee and you can hear Lisa it dripping. And so yeah. it sounds like he's peeing in the back of the podcast right peeing. now. Peeing. Now we have a general like. now we have a general theme for Sorry, the time now Brian you really want to know. <laughs> if you listen, yeah, that and that's my okay, sorry. And that's, sorry for that's the... because if you don't know, if you come to the good household and you don't <laughs> ask for an amazing cup of coffee, you're missing out. You are missing out. Will they definitely coffee. have a strong coffee game here. <laughs> so Okay, sorry. Talk, carry on. Okay, so Raise a Hallelujah started messing around with a version of that. Yeah, so there's this album that came out early 2020 called Peace by Bethel. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's two of them now. There's a volume two now. And it's, you know, this is like a, um, you know, the approach, I think the idea for those albums is like calming and relaxing and soothing. Mm-hmm. And they sort of integrate all of these like scientifically relaxing sounds. And they're, they're really, they're, they're pretty cool albums. And I, I was yeah. listening to the Raise a Hallelujah that's on that first one. And I kept singing a harmony along with the two parts that were on it. So when you brought that up, I was like, well, yeah, if we come up with a version, if we rearrange that in a manner that's, that makes a third harmony suitable, there's at least a North Star to chase. And so that's what I did. I was like, I want, you know, sort of not quite as ethereal as the piece version, but certainly not, you know, not full out like the actual version. Yeah. So, um, Thank you very much, Will. Just got some coffee from Will. <laughs> now you'll be a little more peppy. Yes, I will. Thank you <laughs> very much. It. No pun intended. Uh, yeah. So, so I kind of went for you know I, at the time it was literally just a practical decision. I'm, I wanted to go for something that was sort of kind of in the middle of what you know the the super ethereal piece version, and then you've got the full out um, kind of rowdier version, and I wanted something that kind of made more sense. So. We did like what? I probably did three, four different iterations so. yeah. where I was tweaking the yep. the arrangement. Um, but while I was working on that, uh, you know, I I just got, I started getting the idea to try other songs. There's yeah. a song called "Reckless Love" um, that's also Bethel um, Corey Asbury, Asbury. Yep. and uh, I sat down at the piano and I mean just it just fell out of my hands, this little arrangement for that song. And I'm like, okay. And then the more I, the more I played that when I was just sort of working out the nuances of it, the more I was like, man, I'm sitting down and this feels like, this feels like this version of the song that like is already out there already, you know, it just made so much sense to me. So did you do raise a hallelujah on the piano? Did you start it no, with that? No, I, I was, think tight, you did. I was yeah, typing that right. in because yeah. that's before I was even, yeah. that's before I had a keyboard. So I, yeah. I was literally typing those notes in with that's a right. mouse okay. 
into a virtual piano instrument in Pro Tools. So Reckless Love is really the first one you did even start playing the piano. Yeah, and I did it with that one. And uh, I'm pointing at the one I, I I'm pointing at a I controller that, that now I sits at your house. Been... Yeah, because it was one. It was one that um, it works. It's just ultimately didn't. Um, it wasn't what I wanted. Um, so and Reckless Love still is probably one of my very favorites. Uh, Every single one I is probably it... my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like that one a lot. Yeah, I think it turned out great. I mean, it's uh, it was. You know, when, when you're at least, I think we, we've talked before about reaching the critical phase of, of creative, of creativity, right? Where you, Mm -hmm. where you don't just sort of inherently love everything that you do, but instead, you know, sort of listen for it or listen to it. Ask yourself, is this, is this done yet? Can this be better? Can Mm -hmm. this be refined, improved, Uh, you know, whatever. Um, so for me, uh, when I, when I come back to a version of a song, whether it's sitting down at the piano to play it again and iterate on it, or yeah. if it's I'm in the middle of recording and I'm bouncing mixes and listening in the car, anytime I find myself inclined to keep listening, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I take that anyway as a sign that I'm headed in the right direction. Yeah. Because usually if I'm just like, Meh, then... <laughs> I kind of, you know, Move on. I, I don't, yeah, I don't feel inclined yeah. to listen. I just, it's like, yeah, maybe this is just not there. Yeah. You know? And honestly, that's kind of where we were with Raise a Hallelujah. We did like two or three iterations and then I sort of, we you side, just started getting all we these side other ideas, that. which was, uh, what, you, so Reckless remember? Love showed up, Graves into Gardens, that little yeah. idea showed up. And then I was in the car sort of wishing that there was a We the Kingdom song that would yep. make the cut. And I was like, oh, I just don't know. And then you Holy guys Water showed up. And I'm like, this is insane. That Brian is a We the Kingdom super fan. Super fan. Self-proclaimed. Yeah. I'm not saying fan. anything. You were a super fan. The I'm the Kingdom. only one. You are. I'm the only one. In my, He started their fan club. In my, yeah. In my head, we are all best friends. <laughs> Uh, we've all, we've all known each other our whole lives. Uh, we get together on Sundays for Danishes. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm just glad I'm not the only one that's delusional. That's, yeah. That's great. So yeah. Do you want to know a side Sarah story? Yes. When we were talking about Matthew's yes, I do. So about artists and like thinking that you're friends with people. So growing up, my name is Sarah. Everybody around that age had the name Sarah. And so I used to change my name and tell people my name was something else. And I went a step further and also said that Michael W. Smith was my dad because that sounded like a very much more interesting story. And I wanted to be a musician and famous. And so I was like, if I just tell people Michael W. Smith is my dad, like that makes a whole lot of sense. That is lying. I know. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Anyway. So He's not your dad, note. right? Uh, no. Okay. I wish, but no, not. No, yeah. I love my dad. That sounds horrible. Dad, if you're listening, I knew that's I wouldn't trade you up. Anyway, okay. So reckless love. So back up for a second, because somewhere in there, I remember almost clear as day, you calling me and telling me about the idea of actually thinking, hey, I think we're supposed to call this the Matthew Six Project. Mm-hmm. Where did that happen in the because it wasn't I know the time, like it was the beginning of the year because we were reading through the New Testament yeah, we together totally as a church. Yeah, totally know the timing, right? Like we can almost figure out the day of it. Yeah, yeah, that was in January. But do you remember like if you'd already started working on Because that was, I sent you the text about Raise Hallelujah in November. So it probably was all, did the Matthew 6 idea come the before Matthew Reckless Six, Love or did you no, get it was Reckless definitely the Yeah, no, it was after Reckless Love. Okay. Uh, so I actually, if I, if I remember correctly, I was working on a version of Waymaker that ultimately did not. Uh, yeah. did not make the cut because I just didn't feel like it was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, I didn't feel like the, the difference was dramatic enough yeah. f- to feel impactful. That might um, have actually been the song you were talking to me about when you told me about the Matthew 6. Yeah, I, really, really pretty song. We've had some, you know, I've sung that a couple of times at, at the mm-hmm. church and, and been a part of some pretty impactful moments. That song's, it's close to my heart. It just, I just couldn't, you know, I just couldn't find anything that I felt was really yeah. compelling. But I had sent um, uh, an instrumental version of that to my brother, Mark. Um, who is also in this space. He writes worship songs. He was a worship leader for a very long time. He still works with churches. So he's just very, very comfortable in, mm-hmm. in um, and, and a, my other really, my other go-to sounding board, yeah. uh, aside from you on this project. And I had sent that to him and we were having a conversation and uh, I told him, I think I know what I'm working on. So at that time it was, uh, we had tried Raise a Hallelujah, yeah. Reckless Love, 
uh, Graves into Gardens, I think I had at least started on. Okay. And then and then Waymaker. So I was about yeah. four songs in and I was starting to I was starting to get a sense of a pattern like okay, I'm clearly stripping yeah. these songs down like that's what I'm that's what I'm feeling inclined to do. Cuz there was no hope of a pro- it wasn't like started right no, like I never, oh, let's do this thing. We never thing said just, let's do a project. Yeah, yeah I just I, the the phrase that I used when I talked to my brother was like I think I know what I'm doing. Mm. And he was like, "Oh yeah." And, and I said, uh, yeah, I said, "You know that you know that verse." And at the time I had I didn't yeah, know where didn't it, know was. it was. Yeah. I just said, there's a verse that says, don't be like the Pharisees pray in the middle of the synagogues and the streets mm-hmm. so everybody can see when you pray, go to your room, close the door. And that, that verse leads up to, I believe, um, the Our Father. The Lord's and, Prayer. Yep. Yeah, the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. And uh, the Our Father. That's pretty, that's it's all right. Brilliant. It starts with Our Father. It's this one. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm telling him like that I think I'm doing that yeah with worship songs and you know he thought that made perfect sense and uh and of course you know this so we were in the middle of a of a bible reading that had just started at the beginning of the year Mm -hmm. and sure enough that day it was (laughs) matthew 6 and it included matthew 6 5 through 8 and of course i was i I was like in disbelief because i'm like you got to be kidding me that's the verse of the day so without a doubt, I'm like, this is obviously exactly so what much. I'm doing, yep. right? Like it's, it was ridiculous. So, uh, and that was the start of the Matthew six project. It was, it was, and that's, then, that's when we for sure knew what we were doing. I love it. Yeah. Do we really still know what we're doing? Oh no. Yeah. Good point. We don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but, there's but at we least knew something. what we were working on. No, is really exciting. So that was all the way in November, January of 2020. It was the second week one. of January 21. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been over a year. Mm-hmm. Like literally, because I think I sent you again, we were reading the New Testament again. I sent you, I mean, it's literally been a yeah, year. Yeah. Because that was just the, that was just the, the verse of the day. We're doing the same reading. Yeah. Um, uh, reading plan. And that was the verse of the day, like what, three, four days ago. Yeah. I think the 10th or something. So yeah. Day, somewhere in there. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> Probably should have posted something about that. Okay, so somewhere along the way, so Matthew 6 is not just all um, like your version of covers. There's also some original tunes. You kind of yeah. said that. But when when did the original tunes start coming? In the um, process, do you remember? I don't remember exactly, but I think it was after, uh, it was, it was, I mean, look, I, all I have there. for a timeline is like what song I was working on. Somewhere between Graves in the Garden and Holy Water, I yeah. was like also just noodling around uh-huh. with this piano part that I thought was really pretty and I kind of couldn't stop playing it. And um, my wife actually walked through the room <laughs> and told me that she, that she kept hearing the phrase, I am a child, when I was playing it. The, the part is a little bit lullaby-ish, mm-hmm. um, but that's actually how I write. I, I've always written on whether I'm writing on the guitar or the piano, most everything that I've ever written was, was on the guitar, but I tend to write the music. I noodle around with the music first and sort of allow it to, I'll sing along. I'll do what some people call phonetics, which is you're just kind of babbling and mm-hmm. singing at the same time. And a lot of times while I'm in the middle of doing that, a phrase will just kind of fall out of my mouth and I'm yeah. like, yep, that makes sense. And I think it's because it feels to me like it's because you're allowing the music to sort of tell you what it could be about. I yeah. don't know, you know, ins- inspire yeah. some sort of content. So that's always worked for me. So when she said that to me, not only did I completely agree with her, yeah. but I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And as soon as she said it, I felt like that was the first line of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I felt like I kind of already... Like I immediately knew what that song was yeah. going to be about. It still took a, and still took a while to finish it. That song, that's yeah, that song's called "Here I Am," and it's it wound up being kind of the what I would refer as like the quintessential Matthew Six mm-hmm. song, and it's the it's the first song of the project. It's the first song on the on the EP and number uh, one. It definitely sets the tone, right? It does set the tone. I can't yeah. comment on it because I can't listen to it anymore because every time I listen to that dang song, I cry. I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. It's really good. It, it, like I said, if I had to pick one of the fave of the originals, it probably would be my favorite. If I had to pick. Yeah. But I like all of them. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> what? 
Which is your favorite? If you had to pick a favorite of the original, which one do you have a favorite? No, I could choose. No, I don't know because every every time I iterate on something, every time I do a version, you know, you kind of, you know, you kind of reacquaint yourself, you know. So when I when I was finishing, here I am. I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is so much fun, you know. It's just it just um you get close to something, and then when you're finishing something else, you know, you get you get close to it. So I just think as things start to surface well, they just kind of mm-hmm. become your temporary favorite. Yeah. And then I'll go back and I'll go back and listen. And, you know, it's like, not today. This one's, this one works for me or, you know, um, it's a good one. Yeah. I think that's, that's the case with, I think pretty much everything I've ever written. You know, it's, yeah. Okay. So how long did the whole process take? It's, oh my gosh, I can't believe how many songs is it? Why am I the blanking? Whole pro- the Matthew Six Project. Um, Seven? Yeah, that first. The, so the EP that's out now, it's eight songs, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, it took, yeah, I mean, I think it it basically took the year. I mean, there was obviously, you know, we were, you know, we were building that um, on s- borrowed time, spare time, yeah. you know, like. Um, we, what was the original plan, like to release in September or something crazy like that? I don't I don't even remember. Yeah, I think that was had, the original thinking and then you had a little bit of a setback. But Yeah, I well, I mean, you know, when you when you think to yourself, okay, if I could just block time. Like yeah. if I went back, I would have actually just I probably would have just <laughs> taken 2 weeks off and literally just finished the whole thing cuz it's yeah. the kind of thing it's stripped down. So it's not it's not overly complex. Um and if I, you know, if I were to re-record the whole thing, uh, you know, you could probably do it in seven to ten days. But, yeah. Um, but you gotta, you know, you gotta find time to do it. You gotta get down. You, you know, you gotta redraw that inspiration. And you gotta get in the moment and and yeah. and then capture what needs to be it's captured. Hard to kind of like turn it on and off quickly. Yeah, a little bit. So, and I'm, you know, I do creative. I do creative work for for a living, so you know that stuff is just you know just mentally kind of consumes it consumes you a little bit. So it just yeah, it was just a time consuming process. But it was um, yeah. What's what's nice is I also learned a lot. You know, we I was saying earlier that I had upgraded my studio software, so you know, brand new versions of Pro Tools got some new toys, some new plugins, um, some new gear, and a lot of it you know, there was a learning curve. You mm-hmm. just, it, it all, it's all a lot nicer. It sounds a lot better than some of the stuff that I was using before. Um, so that's inspiring and fun, but there's also a learning curve. So you get to, you know, you get to dive in and start exploring and that also took time. So, yeah. Um, okay. Now so let's... things seem to be, now things seem to be at least, you know, uh, moving a little bit faster when I get an idea, you know, there's not the same, yeah, it's not the same curve. Okay, share the songs. So, share the songs. Can you do them? Like, say say the ones that there are. So we said there's five in order covers. Yeah, can you? Do you remember them in the order we put them? I think I could name them in order. Um, I'm, actually, I can fact check you. Hold on one second. Okay, yeah. So Doo-doo. first song is "Here I Am." That's an original. Yep. Um, second song is "Holy Water" by a band called We the Kingdom. Crazy good band. Uh, third song is "I Will Remain." Mm-hmm. That's another original. Uh, fourth song I do believe is Reckless Love. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic song, really good first line. Um, <laughs> just really good lyrics in general. It is good. Um, fifth song is Raise a Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Uh, sixth song is The Blood and the Body. Uh, that's an original. Uh, Song number seven is So Will I, probably one of the most incredible worship tunes ever written. Mm-hmm. And the last song is Graves into Gardens. That was impressive, Brian. You got them really? all right. Is it that impressive? I don't know. I don't know if I could have done it. I've had to think really hard. They've all got jumbled in my head because I listen to them out of order now. I mean, I know we spent time trying to get yeah. them in the right order. Yeah. So people listening, you should really listen to them in that order. Just for fun. You don't have to. I but think so. There was I've a reason. Thought, I mean, that's that. Yeah. For me, that when we, when we were making records before, too, we like the mastering process. So you go in and you record. That's called tracking. Then you mix. That's obviously called mixing. Um, that's a completely separate process. And then once you're done mixing, um, then you do what's called mastering. And in the mastering process, that's one of the things that you do. You decide the order. Mm-hmm. You decide how much time there is. Uh, 
from the end of one song to the beginning of the other. You sort of adjust volume so that the experience, I mean, and I don't think everyone does it, but if you feel like your project is a work as a, as a whole, like for me, you know that there was a lot of time that went into selecting these songs because it was important to me that, um, that, that they were all, you know, dynamic, impactful, you know, and, 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 and also, you know, kind of aligned with the idea of Matthew six and the idea of one-on-one conversations. Um, so yeah. And then, and then the order, you know, I think, like I said, I don't think everyone consider, uh, considers it as much, but you know, to me, it's, it's kind of important that if, if somebody's going to sit down and listen to all eight songs in yeah. a row, that it feels like it makes sense rather than, you know, it's something that's kind of lost in all the digital music stuff, right? Because they just shuffle through and play. So lost. And we've talked about that before. Like, so I lost. love that because in the old days, <laughs> people yeah. would, I think a lot of artists probably did that there was a reason why. Mm. And I feel like you miss part of the story when you don't listen to them, like the underlying story that you would never really know. But when yeah. you listen to them in the way someone intended them to be. So if you have, how long is the yeah, record? Yeah, we were play? kids, right? Tapes, record play, like you don't, yeah. you, it's, you couldn't oh, skip man, songs. Oh man, when they were tapes, you couldn't You can't record, skip songs. Yeah, you hit you, play and yeah. you, you just, you just let it go. Um, you had to try to rewind 50 times to get yourself in the right spot. Yeah. Horrible. Kids today, they have no idea. <laughs> skip. <laughs> <laughs> they just push a button and it plays, shuffle, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tapes, man, that's going back. Records. Records you could try to guess, right? If you like kind of drop the needle yeah, in the there's right that line. You know. Yeah. But man, because up tapes were horrible. Whose idea was that? Did that really help us better than records? Mm, I, I mean, don't they just know. got smaller, so it's portable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, there you go. Yeah. So those are the eight <laughs> songs. <laughs> Random music thoughts. Whose idea were cassette tapes? We could probably have to look find that, that up. Out. Yeah. I, it's probably was just because they were portable. That makes sense now that I said that. I mean, yeah. a record player kind of hefty. And to, they're analog. I mean, the 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 a brand yeah, new like the cassette way they would tape be, sounded pretty good. Yeah, yeah, not great, but pretty good. Did you ever have eight tracks? Uh, what was when, when I was you were a young? Kid, what was the... my parents had an eight track player? Yeah, they'd okay. listen to like if I remember is like Billy Joel and like Kiss, the Kiss album that was like disco. Oh. I was made for loving you. <laughs> that's what I remember. I remember that. That's great. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm just, that's it. You sing anything else for us? No. You want to sing the first line of every single song? Uh, Could you? On the Kiss Actually, album? Let's do it. No, on the Matthew 6. Absolutely not. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> uh, that's funny. How did we derail to the... To 8-tracks? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Oh, because song order. Yeah. Song order. Fair enough. Okay, song order. So listen to it in order. And, you know, the other thing that you miss with digital music, right, is the liner notes. We've talked about that before. Like, you don't have all the, like... I was totally a nerd. I mean, I loved the little book, like when it was CDs. Well, mm-hmm. even when it was cassette tapes, and it would be all folded up in there. Yeah. Like you could, I mean, I was the one that would read every single part of it because it was interesting. Yeah, I think the, I mean, lyrics are now accessible. And I think it was Will who actually sent me a screenshot. Is it, was it in Spotify, Will, where you can actually access some lighter notes? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either. Which I thought was like fantastic because that's one of the things, you know, like I've, I've worked with some pretty incredible um, studio folks. And, you know, the fact that it's actually, the fact that their involvement is obscured. Yeah. Like I remember I heard, um, there's this artist, Gregory Allen Isaacoff. He has a record mm. that he put out in 2018 called, uh, Evening Machines. Absolutely. One of the most incredible things that I've ever heard. Super inspiring. And I was just like, yeah, I wonder who, I wonder who engineered this. I wonder who helped produce it and mix it. I wonder where it was mastered. And I mean, it took me 25 minutes to find the answer to that yeah. question online. Yeah. And it was not, it was, cum- it was a cumbersome process, right? I mean, of course it took 25 minutes and the whole time you're thinking that is ridiculous. This, this wouldn't be yeah. what it is if it weren't for the talents All the of, extra, of folks yeah. like that. You know, when, yeah. when we made our first record, um, I mean, there were six or eight people who were there every day uh-huh. involved in every aspect. and. And they were all incredibly good at what they did. And, you know, it's 100% would not have been what it was without yeah. that. And the idea of just like eliminating that from visibility, yeah. obscuring that from visibility just makes no sense it's to sad. me. It makes well, no then sense. Let's it's a shame. do this. I feel like you should give verbal 
liner notes right now. There's not that many, really. Because <laughs> oh most gosh. of it was written by you. And I mean, the cover songs are obviously written by, I think you named them and they can find that. But yep. you you did have help with some of the mix or the, oh my gosh, what's the word I want? Mastering. Mi- mixing and mastering. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's true. So I reached out to my friend, uh, Jake Wiedenhofer in Nashville, excellent guitar player. Um, his buddy Logan, I think I'm going to say his name, right? Schlegel or I think it's Schlegel actually. Logan Schlegel mastered it for me. Um, his fresh ears and, uh, fresh feedback were absolutely critical. Um, and, uh, and then let's see, I, you know, I think the thing is I can't start naming all the folks who sang on the end of Graves yeah. in the Gardens because I will forget everybody. But what I could I do is gather that and then we could put it on the show notes if we that's could. helpful, if you're going to do that. I think you can um, remember everybody. Like just right now, just mm-hmm. start naming I mean, names. I mean, part of it was your family, like yes. your brother. Okay, true. So, all right, I'll then, then I'll try, try and then I'll get and myself in trouble. And if we forgot you, we're going to, Brian will owe you a personal apology. Okay. so. Uh, I remember, so Rhonda Mazingo uh-huh. jumped on there kind of early. Okay. Um, Mark Roach, his family, his wife, Carolyn, uh, his son, Connor and his son, Cohen sang on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter, Stella sang on it. Love it. You sang on it. I did. You're Sarah. <laughs> you are yes. Sarah. Good. <laughs> you sang on it. Um, Nate Szynski, yes. At Two Rivers came over and sang on it. Johnny Moore, yep, from Two Rivers came over and uh, well, from Two Rivers, yeah, from from Two Rivers from came two over rivers. and sang on it. Johnny Johnny Moore of Two Rivers, of, two rivers. <laughs> of the Two Rivers, okay, yeah. Um, okay, let's see that guy right there. Uh, Will Good sang on it. Um, um, okay. I think that's all you grab no 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 there's no, somebody no. else yeah there's definitely more um but i gotta i gotta think well two people were there in spirit that's jeff dill and darren hall okay um they didn't actually sing on it but that's probably my fault um but there were more there were more i'll have to give it some more thought okay i think if he there's forgot a few you, he's sorry i think there's a few more I don't, you said everybody I mean, I, that I remember I you. almost didn't say Will and he's standing behind me. That's why I didn't want him starting. I know. This. I don't know that unless you had secret people you didn't tell me about, I don't remember any other names than what you said. Because Will was like one of the last ones because you were getting down to, the, I mean, like we had to get it done. Like we had to get it. You had to finish it. And you were, you say, what were you saying? Fist, rest. What were you, t- what, what was your term? Graves. Fist let's talk fighting. about Graves the Garden for a second. Yeah. Because that was probably the most difficult one. Maybe in some ways. Yeah, it was admittedly it. all difficult, but not because it is difficult, but because it's just foreign territory for me. So when I, you know, I mixed, um, I mixed our radio singles on the first album, and then I mixed our entire second record, um, and then our third EP, I mixed all of that stuff too. But it's, it's all like really straightforward rock, you know, like mm-hmm. pretty, pretty crunchy guitars, panned out hard left and right um you know just crunchy rock tunes um doubled vocals and you know just 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 very different this is all um uh well whatever it's just very different and so trying to get you know a a current um relevant sounding thing that's just entirely different it was just a process mm-hmm. um and uh and what was your heart for grapes like you had a pretty yeah and so grapes was particularly challenging because it felt to me like okay this is going to be the end this is going to be the end of the the of the project or the uh you know the end of the of the work if you will and i wanted it you know to start intimate like everything else but then sort of end like here i am ready to sort of kick down the door Mm -hmm. and and kind of celebrate you know, celebrate yeah. all that it is that you might have considered in those you moments. You would say have a party, I think, is uh, what you're... Kind of, yeah, right? Something. Throw down party? Yeah, so, but getting that to all make sense dynamically in one track was just something I just, I didn't have any experience doing that. So you got like, what, you have five or six or seven minutes yeah. of just piano and vocal, and then all of a sudden you want things to be rowdy, and the whole thing has to feel like it's all, you know... Um, cohesive and yeah i said i definitely referred to that as a fist fight because yeah it just took iteration after iteration and 
truthfully, I don't think it turned out all that great mix wise, but, um, yeah. but I learned a lot in the process. Yeah. And I think when we do, when we do stuff like that moving forward, um, we'll be able to improve on it. Yeah. Um, but it, it gets, turned out pretty good. It I turned out pretty was, good. Yeah. It turned out pretty good. Day, I'm not, I'm not trying to poo poo on the, no, it was great. It was great to have all the extra little voices. Awesome. In there. Absolutely. Awesome. Wouldn't be the same thing without it. That's for sure. And to get to involve some other people, right? Yes. And, and I know I'm going to think of the people that I forgot. I know that's but. all right. Do you want to, do you have anybody, any other liner notes? Your, any other your brother helped notes. you with the video. I mean, that was, you, you talked about your well, brother. Yeah, Mark, but like, I mean, well, you, you and Mark, obviously you sing on Raise a Hallelujah. So that's worth mentioning because you didn't just sing um, uh, the gang vocals at the end. Um, but then Mark, you know, you and Mark were my sounding board. So I still, you know, that would be like, you know, that would be like a co-producer. That would be like a collaborator. And like, yeah, no, I mean, just like, you know. I think you referred to me as your manager. That's a, that's a little still bit. Still not sure how I feel about It's all a little bit of a stretch, I suppose. But I mean, it's, I still think it's, it's worth mentioning. You know, when you're working, we've talked about this before. As a creator, you, you need a safe place to bounce good ideas and bad ideas. Yeah. And without that, it can be really hard to move forward with confidence. Um, so you know, you gotta, you gotta have that. And that's, you know, pretty, pretty critical too. Yeah. Um, it's good. And then of course there's Julie Roach for writing the first line of here I am. And that's a big, <laughs> big deal. Yeah. First line of one of the best songs on it. Mm. Mm. Let's give Julie all the credit Thank for it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I've said I do. It's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite songs. I have not lied about that. Um, okay. Any, what else do you want to talk about for the project? What are their little, I've got a couple other questions, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to touch on the idea that, you know, that 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 Matthew 6 is a concept that's kind of bigger, mm-hmm. that's above and beyond um, you know, me making music or recordings or doing covers. Um, you know, I I'm I just like the concept and I'm mm-hmm. hoping that it resonates with folks and I think it would be amazing to start to start seeing um, you know, Matthew six versions of other songs that, that people yeah. feel inspired to do. And I, you know, it starts with listening to this and asking yourself if it resonates with you or, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's kind of important to, um, yeah, I think it's important to express that because we, we want that to be, we want that to be much much bigger of an idea than yeah. just, you know, some EP that someone put out. Cause you talked about like you, Reference the Matthew six verse, but it obviously is the worship version of all of that, and it's those moments that are just by yourself. Like you said, I don't think you said your whole normal line at the, up front about just taking all the big, huge corporate songs. And there's obviously a time and place for corporate worship and singing mm-hmm. with everybody, and there is a lot of great that comes from that, and it's good and it's impactful. Yeah, but honestly, worship is way bigger than that. And if that's our only time of worship, we're kind of missing out on a lot of it anyway. Yeah. And so the whole heart, part of why I was drawn to the Matthew 6 Project is it is worship, and it's more about all of the other times of worship we hope we should be having and want to have and should be having, but what it looks like when we're just by ourselves, kind of, like when it's just alone, and these are the things that our hearts want to say to God. And that's, I think these songs are really representative of that. Like the way you translated them out, like does that really well. I mean, I told you that obviously I was around for all of this, but like Will and I, I mean, I still put it on to listen to because it's just, it's calming. I don't know. Like there's just something about it that connects with people. That's been fun. I think for you to hear too, how the music just translates. And it's probably the whole reason I sent you the text about raise a hallelujah was just like our world people need, I've said it all, people need this music. Like I, and I said, people need it. And I said, I've needed this music. Like it's just, good and it's not that it's this huge crazy concept or these crazy things but i think that's what makes it so special yeah i think it uh i think it really it um it uncovers i think it it in some ways it transforms but it really does it un- it uncovers the 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 content the lyrical content mm-hmm. of the music um we were saying earlier, like, uh, Holy Water is a great example. Like, that's a big, crunchy tune. You're, yeah. you're that, you're actually the person who introduced me to We the Kingdom because you all went down to, uh, 
worship oh, together yeah, a few yeah. years ago and you, you guys had no idea right <laughs> you guys had no idea who they were and you know that's one of those away. bands like they get up on stage I, and you're yeah. like what is happening no, right now that's who exactly is this how it was. yeah that's what you said to me and i'm like okay what i'm gonna check this out i pull it up and holy <laughs> water is the first thing i'm listening to and i'm like what yeah where what even is this from? like yeah. this is insanely good it's just yeah. it's crunchy it's full of passion all the vo- you know all the vocals are just like insanely compelling yeah. um just a just a band full of monster talent but that's a it's just such a great example of a of a song that sounds like with that song the way that it starts has this energy that's like um it's it's um it's an it's an exciting energy mm-hmm. it's full of like a little bit of crunch and yep. and a, and some angst and it's almost like empowering yeah but when you listen to the Matthew 6 version it's desperate yep it's desperate like even the first line god i'm on my knees again yeah like god i'm on my knees on the on the real version of the song it it sounds like almost like a proclamation like it's yeah. it's an empowering line yeah. you 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 hear it in the Matthew 6 version and it's it just takes you to an entirely yeah. different space yeah um and i think that I, all of the songs uh, graves that they I mean, they're all going to come to mind if i keep thinking about it but um it, it really does transform for for me it transforms the music yeah. and it just um well do you want to talk about our uh reckless love debate because i kept telling you <laughs> on that song when you first played yeah. it, it didn't have and it's, that the lyrics are that song has incredible lyrics from yeah. it. we both love it and you kept trying to maybe add a few things to it. And I kept going, this, it doesn't, yeah. this one doesn't need it. Like, it's just so compelling with a vocal and a piano that's like, don't, don't put anything else with it. Yeah. Did my idea run, went out? It did. It did. Yeah. I th- <laughs> so if you think it's missing something, it's my fault, but no. I think it sounds amazing in the way it is. Yeah. And that was what, you know, we talked about it. That was one of those, those, this, it's so dramatically different from the version. Yeah. And that's one of, you know, that's one of my, I mean, these are all some of my absolute favorite songs from the last four or five years. Um, and Reckless Love is a monster radio tune. It's yeah. a huge, rowdy kind. It's not, it's not rowdy. Um, that's probably the wrong word, but it's just, it's, it's just, just a big, big it's just a big, big yeah. tune. Um, and, but you know, the first time I heard that song and I heard, you know, um, before I spoke a word, mm-hmm. you were singing over me. I'm just like, <laughs> who wrote that? How accurate is that? And, yeah, and how amazing is it that it's true? I mean, that, yeah. I think that's the stuff that like, I can, you know, I could barely even process that reality. Yeah. But when I think about it, it just, you know, fills my heart. And so you're just like, that speaks to me. It's, it's yeah. going to speak to anyone. I think that's a musician, a sp- a particularly a vocalist. Yeah. Cause when we think of how happy we're told that God is, when we sing to him, mm-hmm. the idea that he was singing over us yeah. before we kind of even, you know, we're self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> like we exist, but we're not self-aware yet. And he's, yeah. and he's rejoicing that, you know, that, He's rejoicing in his in his own creation, and it's just it's all just. And the crazy it's thing so is, big. It's so that's big actually and so in the Bible. Like, there's a. I'm pretty sure it's in Zephaniah or Zechariah. Like, it talks about him singing over us, and that idea. There there's Put another Bible old song it. by um. You need to look it up. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's totally. All I can think of is Toby Mac, and that's not it. What's the guy's name from Third Day? Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, nope. Mac Powell. He did a whole album of like some more. They were songs based on scripture. Not at all like Matthew 6, but a different thing. And he's got one on there. And it talks about God singing over us. It's beautiful. And so that's why that line, every time I hear in Reckless Love, I'm like, yes, yes, yeah. it is. Like, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, then there's the, you know, I I remember when I heard the chorus of Reckless Love and the um, uh, the 99 reference, uh, mm-hmm. I didn't actually know the reference at first. Yeah. And so I, I, prob- I was probably singing along with that song for a couple of times before I'm like, I don't even understand what I'm singing and I need to go look that up. Yeah. Um, Great and, parable. And again, you're yeah. just like, ugh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just really, really good and super compelling. And um, leaves the 99 for the one. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah. So that, like I said before, all the songs are picked because they, you know, they, I just think they're, insanely authentic tunes the lyrics are all just spot on and Mm -hmm. scripture based and biblical and they speak to me and um i think if you're familiar with 
any of the songs that were covered on the Matthew Six Project, I think you'll find that you know, it sounds arrogant to say, I think you'll fall in love with them in a completely different way. Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, they're just, the songs are just that good. And I think we've done a pretty good job of honoring the integrity of those tunes, even though we've transformed them as, as dramatically as we have. You've done an incredible job doing that. They're, oh, thank you. They're great. Um, there's no we about that. That's you. Um, okay, Brian. Yes. What, well, let's ask this. Is there going to be, more Matthew six. There is. Oh my gosh! Thank you for asking, Sarah. You're what made welcome. you think of it? <laughs> you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't even know why it didn't occur. See, this is why you're here. This, this is, is why you're having these conversations with me. This is job security. Oh my goodness! Why uh, I couldn't yeah, let you in the so room So there, by there are. Um, yeah. So there are there are other covers. Uh, there's one that um, I actually I I want to kind of release it in short order um i had the we, you and i haven't oh, even yeah. talked about this but i was thinking like does it is it even a problem to just release no you know just release not. something if it People if it's ready yeah um so yeah definitely working on new stuff mm -hmm. definitely definitely writing some new stuff there's only one um, cover there's only one other cover that you've started the rest of them are all originals right oh, yeah that might be right yeah unless you're hiding something i'm pretty sure there's just one the rest of them are just extra originals. And then yeah. part of it is right. Like the bigger versions of blood and the body. That's right. Flipping remain. the so script. Talk about, yeah. yeah. Talk about that. And we want, I want to do that to, to more than just that. Yeah. So I got the original idea when I was working on these eight tunes. So I had the three originals that were all mellow, like the five covers that I did. And I thought, okay, so I stripped down these big corporate tunes, mm -hmm. why don't I do the opposite with these three Matthew six originals and, and, uh, record big versions. Um, and so for the project, my intent was to leave here. I am alone. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to flip the script on, I will remain and the blood and the body, we're working on that. And we think that what we're probably going to do is put out like a deluxe album, if you will, that will include a couple of new songs, but then also some big versions of I Will Remain and The Blood and the Body, and maybe even uh, one more, uh, just depending on yeah. depending on how it goes. But I think after that, see, this is one of the reasons that, uh, that I'm excited for people to hear it and respond to it, because it, people are going to have their own ideas, and they're, they're going to... They're either mm -hmm. going to come to us and say, hey, what about this song? Yeah. And it's going to be something that we either didn't know about or didn't think of. Yeah. And that gives us like a new idea, something yeah. else to chase. And if it works, that would be absolutely incredible, right? Like, So if you have an idea, let us know. 100%. Carry on. Yeah. And, or we don't ever hear about it and we just Find hear it. it. That'd be we just amazing. hear it because someone's like, yeah, I love this concept. It speaks to me. Yeah. And then they just hit the studio and do their own Matthew six version of, of, of whatever yeah. song. Right. Um, and how amazing would that be? Because I, like I said earlier, I think the idea, um, is just far, far bigger than this one project. Yeah. I love it. So mm -hmm. more to come. Definitely if more to come. People want to listen to it and I know they do like they want to go find it. Where are they going to find it? Matthew six project.com. They can is that go right? there to find out more information, but that's right. They, don't they can go there, there to learn to a little bit. You're right. Yeah. So listening to it, you pretty much go anywhere, anywhere you stream music. But you hold can on. Find you it. should go to Matthew six project.com and you can still sign up and you should get signed up to be on our list so that you can find out more information when all the things come out and happen. Yeah. And you should also follow us on social media, truth, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. But if they want to listen to it, where are they going to go? Pretty much anywhere. So Apple Music, Spotify, um, uh, Pandora. Um, what was the other one? Oh, Am Amazon Music. I've heard yeah. that it can be difficult to. I don't know. I got to maybe we got to figure out what's going on with the distribution to Amazon. I think I got a text from someone who said that they have Amazon Unlimited and couldn't find it. Um, but it's supposed but to be there. It's had that Prime, Prime Unlimited, or whatever that's called. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be on there, but it should be pretty much anywhere and you can go to youtube if you don't subscribe to any of that stuff you can go to yeah. youtube um and you can download it um or sorry you can list you can stream it on youtube yeah um, and you can hear and see a really cool video that your yeah. brother helped you put together that just is a condensed version of everything kind of we what we're talking about, about yeah podcast, yeah yeah which is great and hopefully we'll put more information or more content 
there soon, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Brian, what is your biggest hope, aspiration for this project? I know you've said some of it. You got anything else? Like, obviously, that other people will catch on, maybe do some of their own things. Yeah, I think the big, hairy, audacious goal is, you know, that that lots and lots and lots of people hear it mm-hmm. and it and it makes a difference in lots and lots of people's lives you know if if we can if we can keep doing more of it um i've told you this but you know i've i've confessed to several people i, I would i would love for this music to reach the ears of the original creators yeah um i would love for them to uh to feel like we've honored their mm-hmm. work uh cuz that's certainly the idea too yeah um and uh, wouldn't hate it if I heard about it. That's for <laughs> sure too. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, it's you know, it's it's a lot of work. We're going to do everything that we can to create content and and uh, continue to give people reasons to stay in touch with us. Yeah. But again, if you if you engage with us socially, we want to hear from you. We want the feedback. Um, mm-hmm. We we want the ideas, uh, and we want your creative expression. Like we, yeah, you know contribute by all means. And we're not too proud to ask you to share it because that really is how music gets around and ideas. And if you love it and God's using it, man, pass it along, share it with a friend, do something because that it does, it helps. And it means a lot. Not only just, it's so people, right? The heart of it is not just so Matthew six or Brian Roach gets their name out there. It's that people can connect with God and it would do something in their life. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, worship has always been very personal for me. I was this, I was thinking this earlier. It's, um, it, I, a lot of the more defining moments that I've had with worship music have been very personal yeah. moments yeah. and probably the, the coolest stories that have been shared with me since we released this mm. have been kind of like that. I, yeah. I, I either came across this and it was a defining moment for me, or I heard this and I knew someone who needed to hear it yeah. and I passed it along to them. And then you know, here's the story of what happened. Here's yeah. the story of, of how that impacted their lives. And those things are just, they're incredible to read. It's exceedingly humbling. Um, but it's just, you know, it's proof. Like we felt from the get go that we were kind of being obedient to, to God's plan mm-hmm. when we started this project. Um, and certainly when we carved out the amount of time and effort that it took to get it finished, <laughs> especially toward the end. Right. You spent um, a lot of hours. Yeah. So. Uh, it's good to see that it's that it's doing i think what it was intended to do what what he intended it to do so pretty cool stuff i love it anything else you want to share Mm, more to come more to that's exactly what i was gonna say really yeah i told you it's my well probably based on my favorite verse hang out too much i think well friends more to come more matthew six on the way Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed hearing and listening to a deeper look behind the Matthew 6 Project. Make sure to go listen to it. It's available wherever you listen to music. Also, make sure to go check out us on Facebook and Instagram. You can find all things Matthew 6 there. There's some videos on YouTube, but follow us on social so you don't miss out on a single thing as new information comes out about the project. You can be one of the first to know. So make sure to go check that out. And we hope you have an awesome week. Make sure to go share something good with someone around you, and we'll be back here very soon sharing more good stories. 